Hey YouTube! Yes, I'm wearing my Rush t-shirt, um, but I don't know every everything about Rush. I do like this album, Hemispheres and 2112. I quite like quite a lot of them, but I don't know all the words to all the songs. Um, yeah, so I have a disc hanging on my wall the last few days in another attempt to try and get into what's so great about Les Pauls. Um, again, it's like, I know, that, I mean, it is a Les Paul says so on it. P90s is, I've got, you got Les Paul, I've got Les Paul, it's got P90s in it though, kind of thing. Uh, I know they did have P90s in them to start before, they had humbuckers, but it's not the classic Les Paul. Um, although it does have the kind of, this is a 50s tribute one. I don't know, I bought this just at Christmas, um, because I've never had a Gibson Les Paul, so I figured I should have one. Got it cheap because it had been sanded down, so it's basically got no finish on it. I'm going to have to do a... A, an up close one on this because this is meant to have a maple neck and I don't know much about wood but it just it's it's mahogany um even though it's meant to be it is like the same it's the same wood as the body not the same piece but you look at the two of them together if, unless that's maple and it's not well that's a maple a maple top it doesn't see it doesn't it doesn't look like what the neck's made of it's actually started to get a little bit dirty now um because it's got no finish on it. I still undecided what to do with it. To be honest, I kind of like, I kind of like the natural finish on the top, or maybe the varnish the back or something. I kind of like it. Although it will just get dirty, but I'll do anything with it. I don't particularly like the the but right sanded down neck, but I mean that's not a Les Paul's fault. That's this one's fault. To be fair, it didn't actually look. If you look back in a couple of years ago, this used to be belonged to my pal, and it was a. I don't know how the paint job on it was awful. It was like kind of it looked like someone had done it with a brush and gloss paint, and then just done it really quickly and then left it. It was all chipped off, and it just. I think that's one of the, one of the ways they made like the fifties the tribute ones cheaper is by well it doesn't have binding on it back or front or on the neck um it does have a the trapezoid the what do you know crown inlays they're called um people talk about inlays all the time and it's like, I don't really notice them um whatever it's like it, it doesn't make any difference to me whether it had obviously if you gave me two guitars that were exactly the same. And they both played exactly the same. I'd take the one with the fancier inlays, but never really thought about it. I mean, even down to... Look. You get, you know, look at the inlays on that. They're kind of like mother of pearl and then sort of mad bits of inlaid wood. Pretty cool. But um, I, I remember noticing them when I first picked the guitar up. Going, oh, look at those inlays. And that's that. So, and, I, and I believe this is actually a rosewood fingerboard. Not one of your... Rich lights or something. Um, but, uh, I got, maybe it, maybe it's quite nice. I've kind of got used to the way it sits funny by you, you sling it on your side. I'm just used to doing that now. I've now actually started doing that. Let me tell you, I was playing a guitar the other day and I noticed I was doing the same thing. I can't remember what it was. Instead of being on the front, you can put it on the side. Because you can put any guitar on the side. You just can't put a Les Paul on the front because your shoulder's in the wrong place. So, but you can play anyone like that. You put and bring your shoulder, so your shoulder forward, it's not a problem. Nice, I'm so sorry I never did a live stream last night. I was too tired. I was out uh, at Pal's birthday party on Saturday night. Um, only, only had a bottle of Bucky. But I just I was I was kind of getting up up to the live stream. Then I went after I had dinner, just too sleepy. Can't handle drinking anymore. So instead, I played this. I mean, heavy, but not 
not like pure. Oh my God, that's a heavy guitar. I've got heavy. I've got heavier guitars and heavier than a Strat, I suppose. Got Grover tuners on it as well. Not entirely put on straight Grover tuners, but these are not things that I worry about. But more to the point, um, I was. I've been messing about with that Vox amp, which I'm not actually using just now, I'm using Orange again. Uh, and you're messing through all the sounds and thinking, it's like really for for me what I want is um, just a really good clean sound because I'm running the pedals through it all the time. And I started thinking, really, in the last couple of months since I started doing that, that, that slightly different approach to playing, I don't, I've not really done very much loop pedally stuff kicking about. Which means that the orange is just basically just run on that sound since I got it really. But it's actually got a gain channel, so I could use that. Actually the guy gave me a, a, a foot switch with it that didn't work for it. But I took it anyway and then I made it work. So uh, the only thing is that the it's a fender foot switch, but the the red light's on on clean channel. So when you stomp on it the red light goes off and it goes on to dirty channel. But I mean still does the job. So that's all. I think I'd rather than using a rap pedal, why, why am I not using the valves that the amp's full of? on when I'm using the drive. These strings must be six months old as well. not a faultless guitar um i'm more just i have to, i just never liked the look of les paul's I can't, i'm kind of getting this one just because i've got used to looking at it i think um i don't know i do the gibson headstock does make a difference i mean i know it sounds pure pathetic but the headstock shape does look a lot better than the epiphone one the epiphone one is intentionally look crap um yeah, you know, I, 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 I was young once. I remember looking and seeing up here. Oh, he's got an SG. Oh, it's an Epiphone. You know, I mean, so of course you do. Um, I think that this is what 2013 made in the USA 2013 model. These were are not highly regarded. Um, for whatever reason, I think partly to do with the paint job. I just remember the paint job and this being particularly bad. You know, it's like that the the light satin finish or whatever you call it, which kind of. Probably, I mean, the guitars I think themselves were sort of a good few hundred, probably maybe a few hundred quid cheaper. So you're probably talking about hundred pounds worth of paint goes on a Les Paul. Um, obviously, binding must be more expensive, but I mean, these aren't things that would bother me anyway. It's never they're never quite as cut and shut. They used to they used to get uh, like the studio and the standard, and that was it, and the custom. The custom was like the the, you know, the, the black beauty and all that. But the the studio, I don't think I think it I don't think it had binding. 
and stuff like that. It was basically kind of like this, I think. Um, but with better paint, not shitey paint. Um, but the actual bones of the guitar are there. I've also done the frets on this, done a lot of just all, all the setup things. Uh, the thing I've not, not, not done yet, which I don't remember it having when I had it in for a setup before I bought it, is that um, the, the springs that the pickups are on are uh, just too, they're just too, it's too easy just to do that. So I mean, when you're sitting, when I'm playing it, sometimes I'm knocking the pickup with my hand. So I just need to uh, stick foam behind it or something like that. That's not really, it's not really a biggie. Um, but the P90 thing, and again, it's like, I'm kind of, I'm hoping to have a, a plan for what to do with this. I can't really leave it the way it is because it's already started to get a bit grubby fingerprinted. <laughs> And then you're sitting there going, well, do I put a humbucker in the bridge? I don't think I will. Um, <sighs> is a P90s are such a strange thing? It's not really that many. I don't know. I don't really. If any of my heroes, apart from Tony Iommi, obviously uses them, but I always use big humbuckers. So <laughs> they do have a certain, even with the distortion on like that, a certain amount. Of They've got an ability to still play chords and hear all the notes, which humbuckers don't seem to have. You know what I mean? Even though it's quite powerful, you can hear uh, every... Enjoying the, using the actual amp tones, which actually came out of um, the, the Wee Vox amp as well. Because Jen bought the Wee Vox amp and bought a wee orange one, and then announced uh, an orange 30 crush 25 crush 35, something like that. So, a similar sized thing to that, apart from it's got the controls on the top. Which, again, I forgot to mention on the Vox, it's a point off out of a one out of ten for having the knobs on the top purely for me. Um, because it's like, oh, what am I doing? Uh, uh, whereas on this one, it's like, what am I doing? Oh, I can actually see what it's set to, so I don't need to go and fidget with it, or I can just go, oh, be back again. Oh, we bit of volume with that one. It's like, oh, uh, 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 uh. and you can't see when it's on. It's got a light, it's got a power light in the front. That's a silly thing. Um, but that's a, a, that with the the orange crush falls into that category as well. The only thing is. Um, the orange crush is actually orange, mine's black, which is, I didn't know about, the guy did send me a picture of it, um, like, what, what, what model is it, you because know, I was looking up, because I was doing a, a swap with it, and uh, I was like, oh, it's black, because okay, obviously the best thing about an orange amp is the colour, but I mean, I, I'm kind of get used to it, and I kind of like messing about with that, and playing, this, even trying the soft tech the other day, I wonder if my ears are getting a little bit better or something, um, playing the soft tech through the, 4 by 8 cabinet, didn't want to buy a 4 by 8 cabinet, no room for it. Um, and it was sounded very much like a Marshall, because that the that was sounded very much like an orange, um, using the gain on it, which I was using the, the dirty channel again. And it's, I felt the same when I was playing with uh, Jen's one, I had a wee jam, and I was playing through the orange crush, and it sounds fucking brilliant, I really like it. It's a, it's like the, the opposite, it's like the, the main competitor of that, or that type of amp, that's a modelling amp, it's not a modelling amp, it's just a boring old, it just looks like that. I think it might have a better EQ and it's got a tuner, but it's basically, you know, clean channel, dirty channel. That's it. None of your faffing about. I think it might have reverb as well. Um, but I really liked it. And I really liked the distortion sound that was coming from the amp. So I'm thinking, well, I bet you the distortion sound that comes from the expensive version of that amp's even better. And it is, I think, I think I prefer it to the rap version. But my thinking was... I don't have to use it all the time. It's like, see if I, if I want to use the loop pedal, I can just stomp on that switch and everyone's back the way it was. So why have I never been using the... Something something about the... I mean, it's not... Ideally, I'd like the lead going straight into the amp, but there's a... It doesn't have a reverb on it. There is an effects loop, which I might have a wee... 
a wee look at, um, seeing if I can put the reverb into the effects loop, which means I can go straight into the amp. <laughs> I just have to notice as well with this, the reverb, I don't like it on the distortion as much. So that the E and A strings actually join together with a spider web, that's how often I play this guitar. <laughs> so what to do with this? There's there's too many options. I've got the JPAX option as well. Um I'm I bought it and the, the plan was I was gonna buy it, not like it, sell it. But I don't I kinda don't want to get rid of it just now because I don't think I'll ever have another Les Paul. Um and it, there is something about it. I do. It is pretty cool. And maybe being a little bit older and a bit jazzier now. I need to learn another lick other than that one. Gain on it, I don't have to lean down. There's a nice poly. But I don't have a, a very distinct thing to play on P90s. You know, it's like, give me a Telecaster and I'm straight in with a... The telecastery things or a strat or a an SG now about Whereas a P90 Les Paul, I'm not really sure about what exactly what to play on it. It's clearly it's like a rock and roll, I can see it. I can see it working for um A C D C actually, like as a as a concept. Obviously Angus is tiny so needs a lighter guitar, but it's got that I don't know Aerosmithy, I suppose Guns N' Rosy, sleazy, stonesy barroom thing going on. Around. Also, I mean, I've got the, I'm wired and mad, so I can do anything in this. You know, it's like, I was saying, about, oh, I could maybe, I was looking in, um, remember the, the Les Paul BFG, which I nearly bought, actually, at the time, they were 599, and I thought, Les Paul 599, and that was when I went in and tried, like, a two and a half grand one, just to see what a Gibson Les Paul was like, and it was like, it's not as good as my Washburn Falcon, I still hold by it, it's not as good as my Washburn Falcon, it didn't cost two and a half grand, um, it will do someday, but not just now. And I tried the BFG and it was much, it was very, it was basically from, from memory. It's this, well this now, <laughs> now that it's had the paint scraped off it. It, it, was a, it was a kind of crazy guitar, only, it, it, this was a kill switch. And this was the pickup selector, it had like odd wooden knobs. A humbucker on the bridge just screwed straight in. A P90, no truss rod cover. You know, all these things, I suppose the thing that Gibson were doing by not putting a truss rod co cover on is... I bet 99% of the people who bought the Les Paul BFG bought a Gibson truss rod cover for it because you just would, wouldn't you? It's like, you, but there's a bit missing, mate. It's like, no, it's not meant to have that bit. What? Stick a bit of plastic on it. In this case, a 50s tribute one. Although I'm pretty sure uh, in a big box of stuff, Jane got one that said Les Paul Custom. I might do that, I don't know. Do I put a single coil in the middle? Just put many humbuckers in it. Too many options. The thing is, it's got Gibson P90s, and it's, Gibson P90s are good. I, mean, I did an AB with this with the Thor sound and decided I like the Thor sound better. I wonder if that's still the case. I've not played either for months, apart from this one yesterday. I seem to, I seem to want to do that. Yeah. 
gives you a wee bit of a Foxy's guitar channel with his Les Pauls and playing other people. Somebody, somebody actually complained about him going, to, oh, I don't like that Foxy's guitar channel. See the way he plays a D? Oh, I think he plays it like that. Which is fine, but not like that. So he... Again, I've also got the option with them um, messed about with the pedal. Do I make that my slightly less tough one? Does it sound like when I enjoy your British sound? But... Yeah. With the rat. I quite like that. What it's doing there is like that's a very different distortion to the rat. So that it's got that thing going on. That. And then you put the rat on. Tight, tight it up. It's got that. Turn it off the, the dummy channel. So it's just the rat now on the clean channel. It doesn't have that. Almost, I can almost use this as my rhythm sound. So the big sound is the other channel. But what I might do, what I'm noticing is that that, uh, that pedal, the, the Joyo pedal, at the way it's set out, is isn't doing much for me, but in the clean mode, it's really good to get you clean. It's a bit of dark. So I think what I need is uh, another pedal in the mix to do something with the dirty channel of that, or maybe if I turn the dirty channel down. What am I trying to get? Just actually having the two big knob, like not two big knobs, uh, really close, but easy to get. Just maybe I think. Maybe we put reverb on that, that that particular level. does about halfway to suddenly get that whoa thing right there and again start to notice that reverb being on to play the guitar an awful lot more these days. Bizarre. Um, yeah, so again, as I started saying a couple of times, which has not really got anywhere further, is what do I do with this? Options are, I suppose, the easiest option is the one to do nothing about it and just leave it, fuck it. And next time I change the strings, I'll put an extra spring in there so that doesn't bounce as much or put some foam behind it or some rubber behind it to stop it being 
it's actually like a like an arcade button you know like the like a the button for like nudge on a puggy that's what it kind of feels like that was just not as but not as much as that one this is the same with the sg because craig and the sabbath band's got an sg that's the same thing but <laughs> so you try to use it as an effect you know you could sort of hit a <laughs> It's like tremolo. If you didn't have the the noise of the pickup when you're doing that. Um, so I was looking at it thinking it'd be quite nice if it was white. I like a white guitar. But it'd be quite nice having a, what about a white back, right? Or paint the back but leave the top just clear varnish the top so it's still got the maple cap what's the point in having a les paul with a maple cap and you people can't see it's a maple cap it's like no got to justify these things it's like justifying it as in you know when when's a when's a les paul a real les paul and it's like you can see all oh, the standards are real but there's not there's not enough difference i think structurally between this and a standard to make it not a real les paul um even if it is P90s. <laughs> My pals tell me exactly. Paint it gold top. Do a gold top or a relic gold top. And I just know that, that, would, that that's that, that's the, the sensible thing to do to sell it. If I made it a gold, painted it gold and then chipped away at it, that would sell. I've seen so many like that before though. That would be the difference with getting a J-Pax one. It would be the, the only J-Pax one. The only J-Pax Gibson Les Paul. Um, I just don't know if I would want to be... So I'm not actually in a band playing guitar just now. I'm trying to start one up, but um, I just don't know if I would use it. I've got more that I would use. It would be more impressive. Or less Paul's, to me, really uninteresting. I mean, okay, I've got I've got things to talk about on this one because it's the '50s one and it's got there's a few cheap things. It doesn't have any paint on it. You know, all these wee things. But um, I suppose I do, or do I paint the back. I was also thinking of painting it yellow, or I could paint it the colour that I was actually asked to paint it before I said I'm sorry I don't that I don't have the time or the inclination to paint a Les Paul. And the guy's like, oh, I'll get my pal. He's got a car shop to do it. This car, this car shop guy shat it, didn't do it. He's like, oh, can you do it for me? And I was like, I, I, I can't because I don't, I don't know. To get a proper professional finish, I mean, I've got. He gave me half a dozen cans of um, green nitro. He wanted it green, and it's like. <sighs> I don't know. I'm, it's, it's, it's going to be for me. Or possibly a J-Pax. I mean, that's it. I mean, if I make it into a J-Pax, maybe someone will want to buy it for 1500 quid. And then that would sort it, that would sort out the problem, wouldn't it? I mean, if it had been the junior, you know, the flat top one, it would have been TV yellow because that's a really cool guitar. I kind of always wanted one of them. Or I'd probably rather the double cut one. <laughs> So, do I keep the pickups the way they are? It's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? It's like, um, I don't want to... Having two P90s is really cool. I like that. I wonder, do I put a... Maybe a single coil in the middle? Sacrifice one of the tones? Just make it a master tone and sacrifice this and make it a volume control for a middle pickup? Maybe. Um, I just kind of feel... It's kind of weird to have a, a Les Paul that doesn't have humbuckers in it, but, I mean, it's got enough growl and bite. It's not like it's going, oh, it's a little bit weak sounding. You think so? It's not weak sounding. Again... This is so similar to the neck on the fresher neck that's on my shocking bird. Making me think that it's more of a Les Paul, even though it looks like a telly. Again, it doesn't have the finish on it. Maybe that's. Is there something to be said about tone wood that's left to breathe? I mean, is that why that sounds like it does? I kind of don't want to. You start coating these things in poly, does it stop it vibrating?
Which I'm now actually getting to really like this guitar, but might be because I'm now using the dirty channel on my amp, which I'd... To be honest, even if I didn't have the foot switch in it, there's just a switch there which I could easily have used at any time. Just never thought about it. I wasn't ready. Before I go, I'll need to... Um, how do I do this? Or stand back. I need to make sure that the Thor sound isn't, isn't actually better. Because it shouldn't be. You know, it's not even an expensive guitar, this one. Um, there's a little even older strings on it. <laughs> Immediately, it's awful good. Uh, I wonder if it's got the bite that the Gibson does. Chances of it being in tune? Nothing. Very different guitar. You can really hear the maple. But I mean, honestly, in, in my head, whether it actually sounds that way, it seems spanky with a maple fretboard. This is also 25 and a half inch scale, so it's, a, it's Fender scale rather than Gibson scale. It's not doing that <coughs> thing. Okay, so it is. Sound in it. Even though they're both P90s, there's, there's more to it. Remarkably different feeling guitars. Considering, I mean, I don't know if you would ever be able to tell the difference in the mix. It's different enough though. It's not. It's not the same. Neither one is the same, but a better one. I always felt that with my. It's if you back in the day when I was learning to play the guitar, people would buy a shite guitar to learn on. Say it's a Strat. Geez, you're fifty. That's a Strat. A Les Paul you started on. And if you started off on a Les Paul, a shitey Les Paul, your first proper guitar that you bought with your own money, that when you knew what you were talking about, would be a Fender, and on a Squire, and the other way around. If you started off with a shite Strat, the first proper guitar you bought was going to be an Epiphone, um, because the the first one you had was shite because it was. Never set up, the strings were old, blah, 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 blah. So, and then you would get your first, when you joined a band, you would buy the better version of your guitar. Or no, probably not the better version. You'd buy your Epiphone Les Paul, like the fancy one, the gold top one or something like that. And then your next guitar would be the Studio Gibson. You know, the one that's the better quality, but not as fancy. Um, so you'd basically end up with two guitars that were the same, but one was just the same. So a wee bit like those, um, those Jet guitars. That red one was significantly better than the bronze one, and it's like it's because it's, I think it was, was it four hundred and six fifty, so it's like one and a half times the price, 
And it was just amazing what difference that neck made. There's a bigger difference between those two than there is between these two, if that counts. But I kind of get used to it. I've been playing this the last two days. I have actually managed to talk about it for 40 minutes. Um, but... I'm not yet decided. I'm not. I'm not giving up on it. I mean, that's been the last couple of weeks. I've, I got a Harley Benton. I like. I'm using a, a modeling amp. I like. It's like these things. When I, I was, I've been the last couple of years. It's been, that, that wee Vox is a bit of an eye opener. The last few years, I've been uh, really claiming the Black Star ID Core is the best wee amp you can get because it sounds like a real amp, and it's just a wee shitty tranny thing. Whereas that's that that sounds like a real amp as well. And it's like, we're not talking about, you know, second hand, these are like 100 quid, so it's not like a pure expensive, you know, you're not, you're not going to blow £500 on an amp, I'm just talking, if you're buying like a practice amp for the house, although I have heard, um, it wasn't about that, it was about the katanas, they sound amazing in the house, and for recording and stuff, but when you're out there playing with a drummer and stuff like that, and you're playing along with someone else who's got like a Marshall Super League and stuff like that, apparently they just don't cut it, which... I under I, I get it. I mean, I've, I've, I've played a valve amp with someone who's not got a valve amp before, and it's like, sorry, pal, because <laughs> these things are designed to run. I mean, maybe not specifically that one, but the actual amplifier circuit is designed to play along with a drum kit, so it's designed to run at that volume. This whole thing about having a, an amp in your house, you know, that that that's not what this sort of shit with the oranges and the marshals and that were designed for. Modern ones are, but not the old ones. The old ones are for going out and playing in the pub. Why'd you do an amp for the house? Look, you can hear it fine. You just hit the strings hard enough. It's like, well, this is true. Oh, did I buckify it? I'm not going to buckify it. Can't do a buck, a buck fast Gibson Les Paul. Although I think I might have, actually. Um, actually, I've got that green paint. I painted it green. It kind of would be bucky, wouldn't it? Ah, uh, I don't know. Too many decisions. The thing is, to be honest, if I'd bought it to the same price and it, it hadn't been sanded, I would probably have sanded it, so I'd still be in the same position I am right now. Um, the sort of flaking off black gloss didn't 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 work. Um, I think this guitar might have had a. A Les Trem on it and a string butler. Maybe it, is this the one I put the Floyd Rose FRX on? Maybe something like that. You know, kind of crazy things. Whereas I'm kind of sitting here thinking a little bit with the way I'm going with the the whites, the that these two. Kind of this is kind of what an original one was like. I think the fifties one differences would be well, painted gold and I don't know if they I don't know if they had the tunematic. Obviously, different grades of all this stuff, but you know. In principle, this guitar was designed to have two P two P nineties, a pickup selector, and a volume tone, a volume tone for a reason. So it's like, and it's and it's it's the I suppose it's Gibson's first electric uh, solid body electric guitar. You know, so it's, it's been there's a purpose for all these things. It's not like some you know it's like oh the, some cheapy companies made it go oh, they've done something wrong. This is just, this is how it started. What they did wrong was put the wrong. Um, bridge on it at the start the first ones the first ones had a trapeze type thing but because they put the, the neck angle wrong you couldn't put your hand on top of the strings because the, the strings had to go below this bar so you couldn't string me which is up here what the string when you can't string me that that's a toughie it's definitely got that Hopefully that be gibbering on. Um, not hungover anymore though. Um, will be enough for not doing the live stream. Uh, sorry, I didn't do that. I'll get back on it next week. I think I may, hopefully I mentioned it in some of the other videos that I wouldn't be streaming because I was going. I was I was out drinking. Um, drinking and showing off on the guitar. 
I think I was playing Superman at one point. Rock on!